This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Who? The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, Mad Canadian, as Jared's staring at me, uh, <laughs> uh, the Mad Canadian was in Cary this Thursday. They'll be back in Cary for at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria next Thursday. So mark your calendar next Thursday, 4 to 7 at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some good old barbecue and bingo. Be sure to head up his social media for more information about him and his food truck and more upcoming visits from, from him. Mackey Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, uh, this is uh, just the day after Veterans Day. I, I, I feel like we should still be talking about it. Day after Veterans Day, this is a veteran-owned, Marine-owned company that deserves your support. Not just, and by the way, not just because they're Marine-owned. Don't, don't be doing them any favors. Not just because it's veteran-owned. Don't be doing them any favors now. But you should also be doing it because it's an amazing coffee product. It's an amazing coffee product. Uh, all of their beans are fresh, roasted. All of their beans are directly imported from farms, ensuring that the beans are both fair trade certified and USDA organic. All of the beans are then fresh roasted and sent directly to your house. They are not roasted until you order them. And that's their guarantee uh, because they are a company like you would expect from Marine based on integrity. So you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Hope everybody doing well. We are made it to Friday as this is being recorded or as this is being posted. Maction, we had some Maction uh, football this week. Basketball started. It's a good week, and we're gonna we're gonna end it on a high note with some football this Saturday. Yeah, we got Nomad doing our guest picking. He sent us some paragraphs, so we'll have to uh, allot some time for that. So yeah, let's uh, quit screwing around and get started with the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? I have no complaints that I'm going to air publicly. Uh, the Kyle, I, I don't want to mess around. I want to get right into this. We have some sloop picks to do. Um, let's let's get this done in a neat and orderly fashion. And uh, let's let everyone know right off the top of the show, in case you hadn't listened to yesterday's show, which, by the way, you should. But just our first sloop pick is Ohio State versus Purdue. I picked Ohio State to cover a 20 and a half point spread. Nomad and Kyle did not. Why? Because they're traitors. They are Benedict yeah, Arnolds. Yeah. Sure. And you're a homer. Uh, no, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's start off with um, continuing with the Big Ten here. Michigan and Penn State. This is not a whiteout. But it is playing at Penn State, where Penn State is a half point favorite. It's a pick 'em. It's a it's pick 'em. It's a pick 'em, ladies and gentlemen. It uh, is yeah. T. It is Teton versus not our rival. Kyle, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I think Penn State gets the upset here. Ooh, all right. Uh, I like it. And by the way, technically that half point is their half point, so per Vegas, it's not even an upset. But yeah, this is a pick'em game. We're picking the winner. Um, Penn State is so much better than their six and, six and three record. Uh, Penn State is so much better than that twenty third ranking. They aren't getting proper credit for the fact that that Illinois loss and that Iowa loss doesn't happen if Clifford doesn't get hurt. So, Penn State so much better than than they're being given credit for, and they're so much better than Michigan. Okay, well, I just don't trust Penn State's offense to to get the ball to get what? what? Is there anyone trustworthy in this game? 
Are you going to put any amount of trust in James Franklin well, or I, Jim I like, Harbaugh? I, I like Michigan's defense as a whole. I, I do like their defense, and I think they'll really put a stop to Penn State. Penn State's not going to be able to score enough to to win the game. So I'll, I'll pick I'll pick that team up north. I tell you what, though, Kyle, and like, don't real life gamble, as we like to say, don't real life gamble. Over under on this game currently at forty eight and a half. My advice to you, and I'm not giving you gambling advice because do not real life gamble. Don't try and pick the winner here. Just go with that under. <laughs> Just ride that under. Ride the under. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing here today. Yeah, our, our guest picker Nomad, who's also in the chat here, he says here, "A now healthy Clifford has looked like his old self in the past few games, throwing for 363, 361 against Maryland and Ohio State. Lack of dependable running backs continue to be the biggest missing piece for the whatever the hell the Nittany line is team. Jimmy Harbs continues to eat hot dogs. He's stuffed in his pocket before the game." Instead of focusing on continued fourth quarter meltdowns his team has been having, as well as whether or not he wants to settle on just one quarterback. How does this, how does this with a not so inconspicuous chew in his mouth all game long always baffle me? Maybe the milk hidden away in his reserve Gatorade bottle helps with the process. Who knows? Well, I, I can answer that question. I can answer that mm-hmm. question. It's not chew. It's just hot dog. He hasn't. Uh, chewed up yet he's storing <laughs> hot dog reserves in his mouth uh, jimmy harb's defense continues to impress but in the end mr hot dogs and milk at the helm the struggles will continue late in the game i'm taking not our rivals to win and cover you think a hot dog gets pruny in your mouth eventually oh, i don't want to think about it i want to I I think about it the next game here oklahoma and baylor Noon game on Fox here. So this is the Fox special. Uh, Oklahoma is a five and a half point favorite in this game. I I think that's too much. I think that's too much for me. Five and a half too much. I'm, I'm going to take Baylor to cover here. Maybe even pull the upset. But I, I, I'll take Baylor in this one. I just, uh, Oklahoma just plays these games way too close. I, I'm going to, ta- I'm going to take Baylor here. I think the line is at five and a half. I'm going to, I'm going to take Oklahoma. Uh, six and a half would have made, had me thinking a little bit more seven and a half. I think I would have gone with Baylor. Uh, I, so I, I, it's that close to me. It really is that close to me. Um, I think Oklahoma's playing better uh, now with the correct quarterback at the helm. And I've also just never thought Baylor was actually all that good. So take all those things. And yeah, I feel pretty comfortable taking Oklahoma under six points. And what about that over under Jared? Uh, I don't have that up. It's 62. 62. Um, So what? That's 31 points per team. Over, over. Take that over. Yes, sir. All right. Nomad. This is the game. Nobody outside, outside of BFE land that is central Texas and barren wasteland. Oklahoma actually cares about OU's defense is a nightmare, as usual, and the ESPN appointed Heisman runner-up but has only played a couple games, Caleb Williams. Um, Hasn't done enough, or a.k.a. Johnny Manziel 2.0, hasn't done enough for me to care about. I would look up Baylor's stats and performance, but my interest after their loss to a pedestrian TCU is about level with my interest in knowing where Waco is located on a map. There isn't any. Give me Oklahoma to cover the five and a half. There you go. What's next, Kyle? All right, moving through these quick here. All right, we're going, we're going back up to Big Ten country here, Minnesota and Iowa. Uh, Three thirty game, and Iowa is a six and a half point favorite in this game here, Jared. I. I think this is going to be a close game here. I just, I don't like Iowa the way they've been playing, especially offensively. And Minnesota, I think Minnesota can run the ball against Iowa here. 
doesn't matter who the running back is. I, I think Minnesota can keep this a really interesting game. So I'll, I'll take Minnesota to cover here. I'm taking Minnesota as well. Um, it's, it's hard to imagine f- f- me picking picking Iowa to beat most teams by six and a half points. Like it's just, I have so little faith in their offense uh, that it's, it's, it's just legitimately very difficult for me. Um, (laughs) Kyle, you want to guess what, do you know what the over under is on this one yet? Have you looked in this game? No, I haven't. Guess what it is. Guess what it is. Is it like, like 39, 37. And I'd still be tempted to take the under. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you, you look at the last few games. Iowa struggled to beat a Northwestern team that's pretty bad, only winning that game by five points. They lost to Wisconsin. They lost to Purdue. They beat Penn State by only three points. It's it's hard for me to pick Iowa winning, beating any Big Ten team by by more than six and a half points. So I'm just going Minnesota here. Um, the number would have had to have been like three and a half to persuade me to take Iowa. Okay. Maybe even right. two and a half. Let's go two and a half. All right, here. All right, so Nomad here says, why this game was chosen is beyond me. Nomad's blank, always blank, critiquing what games I pick. Blank He's blank. always critiquing what games I pick. And you know what? Honestly, I needed a second game in the 330 slot. I try and spread the gate because I know people like to watch the sloop picks, especially the people who are involved in our online sloop picks. They like to watch those games specifically. I try to spread them out during the course of the day. You'll notice that it's a couple games in this time slot and a couple games in that time. I needed a second 330 game is the answer to that question. All right. uh, Let's see here. He also says... Wisconsin is going to win. Yeah, Wisconsin is going to win the Big West, and watching either of these teams try to play offense is more painful than getting an emergency root canal performed by British dental surgeon in southern Afghanistan in the middle of a war zone. Is that uh, is that personal experience there, buddy? You're still in the <laughs> chat. You haven't said anything in a minute, Nomad. Is that personal experience? We'll see. Neither team will score, but Iowa's defense will duplicate what the Fighting Mama Junes did last week to Minnesota. Give me Iowa to cover at home. Did, did you also, you no, you took Minnesota. So he, he's, he's rolling alone on that one. How are we he doing is, so yeah. far with the, with the spreads of our picks? Uh, you two both went against me with Ohio state. Um, Let's see. I bo- took you- Penn State. He took Penn State. Did you take Penn State? I did not. So you're the lone person to take Michigan. Once again, proving how much you hate the great state of Ohio. Picking against Ohio State, then picking for Michigan. What the hell is wrong with you? Um, that- <laughs> Kyle hates me so much when I do that. Um, Kyle, what bothers you more when I do that or when I call you an NC State homer? <laughs> Uh, so the the other one here, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Baylor here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jared, you picked Oklahoma, and Nomad picked Oklahoma, and I picked Baylor in this one. So again, I'm the lone wolf in this one, and then and then you and I picked Minnesota, and and Nomad picked Iowa. Okay, for that one. So that's a nice little recap, which should take us right into our. Uh, Next commercial break here. Kyle, do you want to go first this time or do you want me to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company um, mentioned where you can catch them next week. Again, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria 4 to 7 next Thursday. Um, but be sure to hit up his social media. Um, he plans on trying to make more visits. Uh, just check, Just check out Facebook, Twitter. He'll post where he's heading to. But as of right now, Playing on Thursday, four to seven at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Um, I want to check some more reviews here. So um, there's one recently here. Uh, someone said that they hired 
um, they hired the, the Mad Canadian to serve their staff at an elementary school. Very brave soul. Uh, <laughs> very, very good barbecue. Uh, the barbecue baked beans were, were her favorite. It was very delicious. And you can look at all these other reviews talking about barbecue sauce is great. The, the, um, the pulled pork is great. Everything that's on the menu is great. So check them out and um, you won't be disappointed. Um, so with that, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Kyle, uh, name, a, name a coffee type for me. Give me, give me a type? roast. Yeah, like a roast. Uh, let's do yeah. light. Let's do a, a light. light roast. Well, there's the medium light Loki. That's what I got for you. Um, it's not a full light coffee. It's a medium light coffee. Again, it's it's called the Loki, named after the Nordic god of mischief. Um, he, he was a thing before Marvel, you guys. Um, one of the most uh, renowned coffees in the world. Wet pro uh, the, I'm not saying the Loki is. I'm saying the specific coffee bean is. I just wasn't attempting to pronounce it because you're... Jurga Chefvi? I, I don't know. Um, I was pronouncing it with like a Russian accent, and it's it's not. So I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing there. But um, but this is a wet process blend that is higher in caffeine than you might expect from a light roast. Uh, it's very low in acidity, a rich uh, tasting coffee. Uh, citrus and floral notes. Um, it's an Ethiopian Jurga Chefvi. You're, you're, I don't know how to pronounce it, you guys. I, I don't know how to pronounce most things, but this one, this is well beyond my skill level. Um, this is a uh, light rose coffee made with 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay your day. Like all of their coffees, it is, <coughs> excuse me, organic and fair trade certified to ensure you're getting the highest quality coffee beans available. Smooth, never bitter, low in acidity, uh, 100% natural, uh, and like most of their coffees, you can get it either um, a whole bean or fresh ground. If you're not someone that grinds your own coffee beans, well, I, the the mad or I almost said the mad Canadian Iron Bean Coffee is a great place to do that because not only is the coffee being I mean, obviously, because you, you roast it before you grind it, right? So if it's fresh roasted, that also means you're getting it fresh ground. And you always want your coffee as freshly ground as possible because the oils and the, I don't need to get into the science of it. Bottom line is, is that you're always getting the freshest possible coffee, whether it be roast, whole bean, ground, or no matter what the situation is over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Okay, Kyle, uh, we have three more games to go. We have a couple Ask Sloopcast questions. Let's let's jump back into this. Sure thing. So let's let's go into the SEC country. Texas A&M and Ole Miss. A pair of two lost teams going at it. In this game, Texas A&M is a two and a half point favorite. Who do you got in this one, Jared? I got Ole Miss not not just to cover this game, but I think. I'm not going to say this with a ton of confidence because maybe only like 55, 60% sure of this, but I think Ole Miss actually wins this football game. Neither of these ge neither of these teams are overly consistent. Neither of these teams are anything special uh, as far as their on the field product this year. Um, I think they're both fairly, a per I think Texas A&M is slightly overranked, but I think they're like, 10 to 20 teams like that's this is who they are um and i think they're fairly evenly matched so ultimately like give me the team that's giving me points uh so i'm gonna go with Ole miss here even if it's only two and a half points i still kind of feel like they win this football game so yeah if you're gonna give me even if it's only a measly two and a half points i'm gonna i'm gonna take those two and a half points i i feel the complete opposite i, f I feel that i feel that texas am will win this game and I feel like Ole Miss is so overrated. I just, I just don't trust this Ole Miss team here. So I, I got Texas A and M to cover in this game. What does Nomad have to say? 
the only thing worse than listening to someone talk about <laughs> going to a service academy or being part of of the Virginia Tech Corp of Cadets is listening to Texas A&M graduates talk about being in their Corp of Cadets. The 12th man is as old as a... Whore. It's pronounced what did whore. I say? You don't pronounce the P. I thought I did it. Sorry. Whore of Cadets. The 12th man is as old as a petrified horse apple. Mississippi can't play defense. a and can't play offense. Give me a and to cover. I, I, I think he said it. Um, Kyle, I think you missed the last line. <laughs> Give me a and to cover and what should be dubbed the whose fan base is more racist game. I feel like that. I feel like Nomad, that would need to be a tournament of a few teams. <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it out there, Nomad. I wanted it out there. I don't care. Um, yeah, and just just so everyone knows, uh, Nomad is. And I'm not going to completely blow up his spot because I know he enjoys his anonymity, either active or or former military. So when he he's talking crap about those service academies, it's it's coming from a place of experience. I, I promise you this. And it's his opinion, too. It's an opinion that I uh, am not equipped to have because I don't have Nomad's life experience. All right, Jared. Uh, next one here, we're going to ACC country where we have probably maybe to decide who wins the division here. Maybe. We got, we got NC State <laughs> taking on Wake Forest. Oh, what has uh, happened to the ACC? How is this game on the ACC network? I, I assume because it was scheduled a long time ago. That's my assumption. I don't know. I don't know. So <clears throat> NC State, Wake Forest, uh, Wake Forest. <laughs> because the fight, despite the fact that it might, that it might decide one of the divisions of the ACC, people still don't care. Might be the actual right answer. By the yeah. way, but just just for the record, Minnesota and Iowa, which also might decide one of the divisions of the Big Ten, is also on the Big Ten network. That's true. Yes, uh, Wake Forest is a two and a half point favorite. <clears throat> I, from what I've seen from Wake Forest offense this year, I, I just think it's going to be too much for NC State. I thought I thought, especially at the beginning of the year, I thought NC State's defense does enough to keep themselves in games to win games. And then when they beat Clemson, it's like, yay, they're, they, they took down Clemson, but then we found out really who Clemson is. And that, that mental um, part of me thinking about NC state's defense didn't really, um, it hasn't really stuck to me as much, but I just, I just think wake force offense is just going to be too much here. So I'll, I'll take two and a half. It's the NC state, um, getting two and a half just isn't just isn't um, enough for me. So I'll, I'll take Wake Forest to cover. Kyle, everything I just said about Texas A and M and Ole Miss, you can copy and paste all of that to this game as well. I I think that the quote unquote underdog here has a slightly better chance of winning this game. I like NC State to beat Wake Forest here, but I'm not confident in it. Again, it's like a it's like a 55, 60% confidence rating that, that, that they actually win this football game, but it's still, I, I like them to win the football game more than I like Wake Forest to win the football game. And so if you're going to give me points, yeah, I'm going to take the points. So like I said, just copy and paste most of the things I just said about the, the Texas A&M Ole Miss game, paste it here, give me the underdog, give me the two and a half points in a game in which I think both teams have a relatively equal chance of winning. Both of these teams are fine. Both of these teams are ranked in that 10 to 20 area, which is exactly where they appropriately belong to be. I believe these are appropriate ranks for these teams. They're evenly matched. Give me the two and a half points. All right. Nomad here says, in what should be otherwise be an entertaining game, the ACC has zero national relevancy this year means I will be eating barbecue and drinking a cold IPA instead of paying attention to this game. Wake Forest can't play defense. NC State, well, they're struggling with just being meaningful for once in the ACC. Uh, Wake has too much offensive firepower. 
give me Wake 2 cover. And again, kind of like Ole Miss and Texas A&M, you have one team who is offensively good but defensively challenged and the opposite thing on the opposite side of the field. So who knows, right? You go in strength on strength in both of these games and week on week for that matter. Next up, next up here, we got, we got some um, big 12 action here. TCU taking on Oklahoma state. Nomad. If you would like to uh, critique me for putting this game on the schedule, that that's fine. Like this was, (laughs) is it, I haven't read your, I haven't read your answer yet. Uh, It's, this was the seventh game I added. I ran out. There was like six. There was like six games to pick. Uh, th- this one is 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 what the, the yeah okay. This Oklahoma was the seventh State, game. Oklahoma State is a thirteen and a half point favorite. I, I Oklahoma State. I <laughs> Oklahoma State. I, I got I got Oklahoma State to care to cover. To care? To care. Are, is that is that is that Whatever. you saying that you don't? <laughs> yes, I don't. Uh you know, you put this I've put this on here uh hoping that maybe some team chaos comes out of it. Uh we saw TCU get a big upset last week against Baylor, knocking off uh what was what the number twelve or so team uh last week. Um they you know they they just they just moved on to a new coaching a new head coach and they just uh, Oklahoma State is a good defensive team um offensively i'd say they're fine uh they're nothing special offensively although they have some really nice talent i don't feel like they put it all together all the time um so I think they struggle in the quarterback position. I think they struggle a lot in the quarterback position. Oklahoma State is very limited on where they can go this year. I do think they end up winning this game, but TCU has a little bit of momentum right now, and they might ride that enough to make this interesting, even if they don't actually put it away at the end. But at, at what is it, 13 and a half, 14 and a half points that we locked this in, 13 and a half? At 13 and a half, I feel like I can maybe lock in TCU, but ultimately I think Oklahoma state's defense wins the day. Um, probably holding TCU to under like in a single digit point total. So even if Oklahoma state's offense, isn't that good, I don't feel like they need to score that many points to actually cover. So what, what I think what you see here is probably like a 28 to seven football game, which is enough, which is enough to cover. Yeah. All right, Nomad here. He says version <laughs> version 2.0 of my take on the OU versus Baylor game. There you go, Jared. Uh, another game where anyone outside of the overinflated egos of Dallas and the cow manure wasteland of Oklahoma doesn't care. 13 and a half points, too much, too rich for my blood. Give me TCU to cover. Uh, that is totally fair. I understand where you're coming from, although I disagree. Kyle, All right. ooh, I almost burped into the microphone. Kyle, time for some Ask Sloop Ask questions. What do we have? Yes, uh, Nomad here again asks, with the unveiling of the CFP rankings, if you shifted the definition of the tiered levels, the explanations no longer seem to match original definition. Yeah, yeah, we we trim down our so if anyone maybe doesn't listen to our tuesday or watch our tuesday episode we've been putting teams in a a tier system all year and just based on the fact that it's late in the season and honestly also just based on some feedback we were getting from listeners that the that maybe the tier list episodes were a bit bloated and hard to follow so combine Mm -hmm. the fact that it's late in the season with some of the feedback we were getting from people yeah, we completely just removed almost all of college football from the tier list What and basically turned it into sort of a playoff predictor where our S tier is now basically the four teams in the playoff per Kyle and I. And the, the next tier, the A tier, is essentially like teams that are just like on the cusp of getting into the playoff, maybe teams that can get there 
based off of like we have Michigan in the A tier. Why? Because I f- I feel like Michigan at least I think Michigan probably controls their own destiny. If Michigan completely wins out, beats Ohio State, wins the Big Ten championship game, Michigan's in the playoffs. So I think that's sort of what the A tier is, a a team that can earn their own way into the playoff or maybe get there with a minimum amount of help. Mm -hmm. And then we have like the the B tier, which are teams that with like a realistic option, but need a lot of help. Then we have the C tier, which are teams that were just aren't realistically able to make the playoffs. But also we don't want to completely rule them out either. So that's, that's kind of how the new tier system works. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, Nomad also says more than that B tier and above seems to be focused on, on P five on power five. Uh, That's not, that's not at all true. We have Cincinnati in there. So take that. who's Who's your Buckeye Zach with a question about Bama. Why does why does Bama suck and still get praise? Because whether the playoff committee wants to admit it or not, and they're not going to admit it, they look at recruiting rankings. It's a dirty little secret. No one wants to admit it. They look at recruiting rankings. They under they know and understand how much talent is on a football team, and they'll never come out and say it. They'll never say Alabama recruits better than anyone else in the country. Therefore, we're going to put them number two in the playoffs. They'll never come out and say it. They'll they'll make up a bunch of BS excuses about why this team's here and why team. It's an impossible task to summarize the opinions of 13 people with a sentence or two. So I understand that everyone hates uh, I'm blanking on his name, the the committee chairman because the 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 explanations he's giving are inconsistent and yeah okay, yeah they are they are inconsistent why because he's trying to summarize the opinion of 13 different people in a sentence or two which is an impossible thing for him to do and if you're asking for transparency you're not going to get it sorry that 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 transparency was not built into this model but like I said, right. the one the one thing that they are doing that they will never admit to doing is they are looking at recruiting rankings. Yeah. Or at least even if they aren't like looking at recruiting rankings, they they are just acknowledging the amount of talent on a given football team. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Jared, that is all the questions. And I think that is it for our Sloop Picks episode. Yeah, well, I think we're actually going to finish this one on time for once. What a small miracle that is. I uh, want to encourage everyone to just come hang out in our Discord server. If you're tired of Twitter, if you're tired of the, the drama that you find on Twitter and elsewhere on the Internet, uh, we have a tightly moderated uh, Discord server. Uh, it's it's a positivity-based server. We don't allow um, outside fans in. If we, if we notice someone's a Penn State or a Michigan or an Alabama, we, we boot them immediately. Um, it's It's... it's one of the most um, peaceful <laughs> Discord servers you're going to find. Uh, like I said, it's all of the shenanigans that, that take place in the server are good hearted shenanigans. And it's a, it's a nice community we have. And if you act up, we'll kick your ass out. That's, that's, that's how it is. Cause we're trying to preserve the culture of the server and not letting it spiral into, into chaos. And so if you bring chaos to the server, we're going to remove you. But if you want to hang out with uh, fellow Ohio State fans and talk intelligently about football games and not just, this dude sucks and I want him fired and benched and Yeah, thank you, Buckeye Zach. He says, we're positive jackasses. I I have nothing else to add. Kyle, what do you have in your uh, Kyle's Corner? Staying on staying on the vibe of being positive basketball, Jared, the, the 2022 basketball rankings, which we never talk about, never talk about Ohio state finishes first in the big 10. Sorry. What now? 
Ohio State basketball recruiting finished first in the Big Ten for the 2022 basketball rankings per 24-7 sports. They are sixth. They finished sixth overall in, in the rank in the um um in the composite rankings. I don't know how to feel about that. Because like I listen. I've been trying to put hope into this basketball team and they keep hurting me. And when you say stuff like that, it gives me hope again. And like, I went into, I went into this last game against Akron. First, first actual game of the season. Got all these seniors of like fifth year and maybe even Uh, fans in the stadium it's at home it's in columbus it's in the schottenstein center i'm excited i'm looking forward to the season like i said you got all of this senior talent on the team i think i saw uh, i think uh austin in our server said that there's like a thousand combined basketball starts on ohio state's roster something like that if that number's wrong blame austin um and and then they beat Akron by one point on a buzzer beater. And it's just like, Kyle, I was ready to be hurt again, but damn, I wasn't ready to be hurt again in week one. And then you go and you tell me stuff like that, and it gives me hope again. And I, I'm tired of getting hurt, Kyle. I'm just being positive, Jared. I'm just being positive. All right, we can end the episode. <laughs> end the episode, Jared. Tonight's episode... Uh, no, I almost said sponsored by that's 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 inaccurate. Tonight's ending music we brought to you by a Columbus based band called Courtney from work. They just announced a December 4th date. That is December 4th uh, at the Roomba Cafe in Columbus, Ohio. That is Saturday, December 4th at the Roomba Cafe in I believe we call that the Glen Echo neighborhood of Columbus. I, I believe that's what we call that. Uh, uh, that's uh, again, the Roomba Cafe. Columbus, Ohio. Name of the band is Courtney from work. I think we just played them recently, but they announced the new date. So I wanted to play them again. And quite frankly, once we get closer to that December 4th date, I'll probably play them a third time and remind you about the show. So that's, uh, you know, when, when you're, when you do four episodes a week, you're going to replace some bands more often, uh, is the, is the truth of the matter. But, uh, yeah. So once again, Courtney from work, uh, Columbus based band Roomba cafe, December 4th. So with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work. 